Hey guys, John Jr. here, bringing you guys another competitive Pokemon video. Today, I'm going to be talking about how good Roaring Moon is in competitive Pokemon when it comes to singles, both Draft League and OU. Before that though, did you know that only about 25% of you guys are subscribed to this channel? If you are not sure if you're subscribed to the channel, go ahead and scroll down there, click that subscribe button if you have not already, and while you're down there, you may as well go ahead and leave a like to support this video. With all that being said though, let's go ahead and get into my competitive Roaring Moon analysis. Roaring Moon is in Pokemon Scarlet, it is past Salamence, it is a Dragon and Dark type. Everybody knows about Dragon and Dark because of Hydreigon, a very good Pokemon. Not quite top tier I wouldn't say, but close if nothing else. The cool thing about Roaring Moon is it is better than Hydreigon. Not in every way, Hydreigon has a little bit more versatility probably, but the things that Roaring Moon does, it does so much better than the things that Hydreigon does, and we're going to go ahead and talk about those. Dragon Dark, not the best typing defensively, offensively though, a very good typing, and this is actually, in my opinion, one of the best Pokemon that can currently take advantage of Terra typing. If you Terra into simply Dragon type or simply Dark type, both are fine defensive typings on their own. If you do end up Terra typing, you have basically adaptability on whatever stab you choose, whether it be Dragon or Dark. Dark probably would be a little bit better, although Dragon does give you a a little bit more resistances so it depends on if you want to go more offensive or defensive with your terra type in my opinion whichever one you choose roaring moon is going to do that job very very well it's a very good pokemon it has protosynthesis and its stats are where we really start talking about this amazing pokemon so to start off as 105 hp which is a very very good hp stat 139 attack which is an insane offensive power 71 defense which is usable not the best though 55 special attack, 101 split death, and then 119 speed. So obviously you can see this is a fast physical attacker with really good special bulk. Because of the special bulk, it's very, very able to take use of Roos whenever it takes special hits. And it's very able to be a special sponge too. But obviously the main draw to this Pokemon is going to be its offensive power and its typing. And if you can Terra this Pokemon in a draft league setting, I know a lot of leagues right now are allowing Terra, but doing like 18 point Terra captains. Obviously Roaring Moon is currently going to be 18 points. I do not see another way that you do not make Roaring Moon your Terra captain. Like I think this is genuinely one of, if not the best Terra captain in the game currently. To get started, let's go ahead and talk about this Pokemon's moveset. I went ahead and pulled up what I think are probably the four most prevalent moves on this thing's moveset. Roos, Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, and Jawlock. Roos is very self-explanatory. This is a very defensive Pokemon. It can be at least, especially 105 HP and 101 speed depth. That is very, very good special defense. And it can sponge those hits and it can roost off very, very easily. Dragon Dance is going to be probably the second best move on this Pokemon because while you do not need it, if you get a Dragon Dance up, the game might just be over, quite simply, because already almost nothing is outspeeding this Pokemon unless it is Scarf and it is already hitting very, very hard. But even if you do get that DD up, you're even stronger, even faster. No Scarf is going to outspeed you, to my knowledge, that's currently in the tier. And then obviously we're going to put the stabs on there Dragon Claw and Jawlock. Dragon Claw, obviously, Dragon Stab, you can replace it with Scale Shot if you want to. Do the same thing. I would probably prefer Dragon Claw on this Pokemon simply just because Scale Shot lowers your defense and raises your speed and this Pokemon doesn't need its speed necessarily raised. Very niche matchups maybe, but overall Dragon Claw is probably better. And then Jawlock, which was the signature move of Dreadnought last generation, for some reason was a dark move, is now on Roaring Moon. And while I do not think that Jawlock is broken, Jawlock's a really cool move. You can trap Pokemon in and you can potentially set up on them with a potential Dragon Dance. So that's very, very nice. This Pokemon is not necessarily always going to want to take advantage of that because it also prevents you from switching out so you have to be careful and if you don't even want to mess with that, those mind games i think crunch is a fine substitute because there's going to be very few situations in which the jaw lock trap is going to work in this offensive meta so you could just go ahead and slap on crunch probably and you'll be completely fine this pokemon just has an unbelievable amount of moves to talk about so earthquake earthquake on this pokemon is very vital it lets you hit steel types if they have a good steel pokemon earthquake is going to be super super important you can also substitute this with fire fang if you're facing something like bronzong uh, uh, that's actually the only one that comes to mind in this game at the moment. You have Iron Head as well in this Pokemon. Iron Head is crazy because it allows you to hit Fairy types. So there's basically nothing currently that comes to mind in this game that walls Roaring Moon. It is just such a good offensive threat with these with its stabs plus these two moves. It also has U-turns, so Band sets are very real. And then Taunt. So Taunt DD Roost sets are also a very good possibility with this Pokemon. It can Taunt in something's face. It can Stall Break super easily, which... Stall's not a really big problem right now anyway, but in a draft league setting especially, Taunt is a very nice move to have. This is probably the last set of moves I'm going to show just because it has so many, and I just want to show you a little bit of, a little sample size of what it can possibly do. So Brick Break, again, another option for steals. It can help you hit a couple of steals. Earthquake might not be able to let you hit, uh, unless they're Air Balloon, in case they're Air Balloon or something like that. Fire Fang, same thing. 
like bronzong it helps you with i guess which again i said that earlier and i thought about it and that doesn't really make sense because you're a dark type but you i don't know you may need fire fang for something down the line in some niche matchup stone edge allows you to hit things like i don't know bulky fire types that maybe give you a little bit of trouble maybe some flying type with a dual stab i don't know it, it's kind of weird like 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 togekiss i guess it, do, it doesn't allow you to hit pokemon necessarily that are in this game but in the future in natural decks these moves will be useful in some very very niche situations and then the last move i'm going to show is acrobatics because there is actually some cool strats with acrobatics you could use a booster energizer you could use a booster energy that's what it's called and you can automatically activate your ability protosynthesis and then you immediately have acrobatics which is 110 base power usable probably the strongest non-stab move you get as far as i'm aware besides like double edge yeah that looks to be the strongest usable non-giga impact st physical stab move that you get uh double edge i guess so this pokemon is a little bit harder to get creative with but there are four sets that i do want to show you guys off the top of my head so the first set here is going to be dd dual stabs obviously this is going to be a very good set you guys knew that just from the moves i showed you we have roost dragon dance crunch and dragon claw so you have dual stab dd it hits a lot of Pokemon if they have, don't have a fair that this is a very good set in whatever matchup. And actually, they made him adamant immediately, but you might want to go Jolly on the ladder just in case there are other Roaring Moon. The next set is going to be simply a choice bandit set. This might just be the best Roaring Moon set that there is. U turn, Dragon Claw, Crunch, and Iron Head hits literally as far as I can think of right now. Literally every single Pokemon. Like, I cannot think of a Pokemon off the top of my head that resists it. If you can actually. Let me know down below a Pokemon that resists all three of these types. I simply just can't think of it. And even if there is that Pokemon, you can simply 140 base power U turn on that, or 140 base attack U turn on that Pokemon. So I think this is probably my favorite Roaring Moon set. I don't see, uh, especially in OU, I feel like this is the best Roaring Moon set. The next set's gonna be a Taunt DD. We have Roost, Dragon Dance, Taunt, Outrage. If they don't have a Fairy, if they don't have a good Seal, you can really take advantage of them. This can also have Outrage replaced with Crunch if they don't have a good Dark Resist. Like. This Pokemon can just DD a lot of things faces, taunt so it can't get toxic, paralyzed, status of any sort, and then DD in their face and go crazy with whatever mono move you decide to go with. The next set is going to be simply Life Orb 3 attacks, I'm very familiar with this set with Hydreigon. If this Pokemon, maybe this isn't the best set on it, I think Bandit is probably just simply better in every way, in my opinion at least, because it gets U-turn. So we have Roost, Crunch, Dragon Claw, and Iron Head, you basically hit everything with this. I don't know, maybe some people would prefer Life Orb to Bandit, I just... I think personally I would always run Bandit over Life Orb, but Life Orb 3 attacks is definitely an option and I don't think it's a bad option. And then lastly we have a goofy little set here, we have Roost, Acrobatics, Crunch, and Dragon Claw. We are terrifying and we have the Booster Energy, just so you get Stab Acro. I don't know, I, this is just something goofy that maybe you'd want to run to have fun with your friends. I don't know, I think it'd be cool to run. Don't think it is better than any of the other four sets I showed you guys. And I do think that you could play around with this thing's Terra and make it like a Terra Poison to resist the fairies or something and have a lot of fun with that. But as it currently stands, these are probably the sets that I would think of running. And I think that this Pokemon has a lot of competitive usability. I think this Pokemon is crazy, especially in Draft League. And hopefully I'll be able to draft it here soon. But with all that being said, make sure to leave a like if you guys enjoyed. I have a lot more videos coming your way here soon. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. Signing off.